feel like there are a lot of like millennial companies like Away, WeWork, Peloton, SoulCycle, The Wing, Sweetgreen, Soylent, and those types of companies. I feel like a lot of these like Sweetgreen and Soylent have like a lot to do with like overworking and so does like Away. And oh, that's okay. Thank you. Mukbang. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of just like the romanticization of like overworking and then just how everyone has to be like online all the time just like the fastest to respond to emails or to like always be on slack if you think about sweet green it's kind of just like a refueling station like you're not really enjoying the food you like get in and get out within like 15 minutes and you're like refueled it's like something like healthy and soylent's just like in wally -E. you know the people when they drink like their food that's like exactly what soylent reminds me of so i feel like it's kind of just getting rid of all like living necessities like eating and sleeping just like minimizing that to the point where you're just like you're barely surviving just to like maximize your productivity. I feel like it's more of like a social club like connections kind of thing more than anything even though they do brand themselves as like a co-working space. Like I feel like there's some sort of like status symbol like to be a part of these like clubs. I feel like it kind of reminds me of this like old social club but it's kind of like a social club but then just like rebranded to like work so then people are just like oh like we help inspire each other and uplift each other. I know they do offer scholarship but I was like it really is targeted towards someone who can afford that like 215 to 250 price tag like per month just to sit there and I do have like events but also like you can go to Eventbrite and filter for free events. <laughs> okay so you know how there are all those things where it's like a millennials like work so hard and they can't even afford like a third of a house maybe like our new data symbols are like how hard we work like I've definitely read like a lot of articles about how everyone is always like oh I'm so busy oh we talked about this how like saying like you're busy is like a status symbol but I think that is reflected in a lot of the things that like successful people do like Sweet green and like Soylent and like co-working spaces and soul cycle and like things like that where it's like maximize your time and, like and your potential so maybe like replacing like no one does like cotillion or people still do like cotillion and like debutante balls and like that sort of thing but now it's like what co-working spaces are you like a part of or like your exercise routine and like things like that I guess. I feel like this is like a little too deep, but I, like in one of my classes, we're discussing like capitalism and how it's like human beings are now instead of like humans, they are just treated as like parts of a production, more just like optimizing each machine part instead of like being like you're a human being and you have to live a fulfilling life. It's just like, how can you maximize your productivity to make more money in return? I don't even know what you get. Like some like artificial satisfaction with your life, like postponing your happiness until you're like retired. It's kind of sad. <laughs> Our lives kind of revolve around working hard to get into a school so you can get into like a fulfilling career or not fulfilling but just like lucrative um, yeah exactly lucrative and then you go through that career just constantly looking for like promotions and your next step and then you retire and you don't know what to do with yourself and then you die <laughs> oh, okay we're back to our existential crises <laughs> well that wasn't what i wanted to talk about <laughs> I did read like an article somewhere where it was like work and personal life like time boundaries have blurred together a lot more so like employees are like they're more relaxed about like using office time to like do other things like online shopping but also it goes the other way where employees are also kind of expected to keep responding to like messages or to be checking your inbox while you're not at work and I feel like slack is definitely like a part of that because like you get notifications and like like you're kind of just expected to be like on all the time like when I worked at Lime they would like slack me things they were very nice and they all he said like get to this like when you're at work next time but I like got the notification and I was like well I can just like do it now like on the Caltrain but like I was technically like off the clock but I would still do it anyways because I guess I could like make the time and also like I saw the notification so I was like I have to do it. That reminds me of something I was sometimes I watch one of those like oh how do CEOs like spend their days and then so many of them I feel like right now because people are realizing that like you need to carve out time for your family and everything so then the CEOs are always just like yeah like after say 6 p.m. I turn off my work phone and it's like just with my family. And I feel like there's kind of this like element of privilege attached to it because like nobody's gonna fire them if they turn off their phone, you know? And they can do that and people are like, wow, like that's amazing. They can balance everything. But like, if just like a lower, like a normal employee does that, their manager might call them in and be like, so like, why aren't you doing more? Or like, why aren't you as productive as the other people? There is some um, privilege to be able to step back from work, to carve out like personal time and time to, you know, sit down dinner with your family and like cook instead of like shoveling a salad into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> 
why is this a thing? Like, is it because of like technology or because like more people are college educated or like, why? Because I don't think that like we're inherently like smarter than our previous generation or like inherently more hardworking. I'm like not to blame it on the boomers, <laughs> but like, I don't know, maybe it's just, yeah, like what you talked about before, how everything's so much more expensive, but minimum wage is like still the same. Back then, you know, people could work part time and get themselves through college. And now it's just like, that's impossible. You always hear about like European countries where like, especially like Spain, where they have like siestas and people like in the afternoon, they like nap and take time for themselves and like go home to their families. It, also in China too, like people go home to eat like lunch with their families and take a nap. And they're like, it's just so like nonstop. And I just, I don't know, maybe it's just the whole like American dream thing where it's like success is inherently based on how hard you work. And if you're not succeeding, you're not working hard enough. And it's not based on like any external circumstances. I think the internet definitely has like a part to play in it because you're more aware of what other people are doing. Like, you know, when people are like, so excited to announce that I have just accepted a summer internship <laughs> position at Google. And you're like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> you can find internships like across the country and like things like that. It's like given us more like options and also like shown us what everyone else has done too. And then we're like, ah. Oh. I feel like there's like a rise of that on YouTube and other like social media platforms as well. Like, do you ever watch those like my 5 a.m. morning routine? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like they're everywhere, but maybe it's the YouTube algorithm because I keep watching them <laughs> and I keep spitting it out. But there's just so many of them where it's like my 5 a.m. morning routines and then, or like something like crazy like that where you just like, they go through their day and then they're like, I wake up at 5 a.m. and I get to the gym and I like make a full breakfast and I walk my dog and I like, work on my side project and then I go into work and then after work I like you know I don't just they just have like a full day and they're like they seem like normal happy people and I'm like how do you balance all that it just feels like we have to be like turned on wait not like <laughs> oh. we have to be like, <laughs> like as in like I feel like it's kind of inexcusable to take like downtime like you always have to be on your like not best behavior but just like your best self all the time <laughs> they're many euphemisms <laughs> But I also feel like there's a huge like counterculture where it's like like there's so many people who are like oh I just like pulled like three all-nighters and oh this is so bad I like need to like self-care but like I finally finished my uh, project or like you know things like that there are the people who like do that and then there's also like an equally big group of people who are like oh you need to practice self-care like you need to like go to therapy you need to like get enough sleep you need to like take time away from their phone and stuff and I feel like frequently like they overlap like people are like not getting a lot of sleep in order to like get up and journal or get up and like go to the gym and then make like an acai bowl or something and it's like, I don't know, I almost feel like having a morning routine and like being like healthy and like well-rounded is part of like the whole like idea of what makes someone successful. You know, it's not just like what their position is or it's also like, oh, they're like well-rounded and they like read books or like whatever. Speaking of, I've been getting up at 7.30 every morning to read and listen to NPR and drink tea. So, oh, wow. Look you know. at you being an optimized human <laughs> being. <laughs> self-care and it's like people I feel like promote it kind of something you do when you're about to burn out or you have burnout burns out and it's not something like you implement like day to day you always see like oh, more YouTube videos about like like, like my reset routine where it's just like I'm taking my Sundays for self-care but then I'm just like then the other six days of your week you're just like working yourself to death and then it's just this one day where you're like gotta recover so I don't crash and burn and die I read this book called why we sleep by uh P uh, uh, Dr. Uh, really? Matthew Whoa. Walker. Uh, <laughs> he um, teaches at UC Berkeley. Go, Go Bears. Bears. Oh. Wait, that's not even the Go Bears. <laughs> You're a furry. <laughs> Is this what you meant by turned on all the time? <laughs> Wonderful. Anyways, back to, yeah. <laughs> back to my point. He was talking about like, obviously I feel like most people know this, but like you can't catch up on sleep debt. Like once like you lose your sleep, like you lose your sleep, you can't just sleep like 15 hours on a weekend and have like a rest day and like be refreshed or whatever. What I didn't know before about sleep is that like, no, 10 days of getting seven hours of sleep a night does the same thing to your like brain abilities as like 24 hours without sleeping. And I feel like seven hours for most people is like, oh, that's like a really good like number of hours. But like your brain is like decaying while you do that so just a thought also when you cut off the like last chunk of your sleep if you go to sleep at 12 and get up at like 6 30 or something you're cutting off like the last bit of like your REM sleep which is like really important for your like memory consolidation which I feel like is what a lot of us do in college because we're trying to like study in the morning before like a test or something but like it's doing like the opposite thing 
but like we don't realize it. I feel like whenever I get enough sleep, I was gonna say seven hours, but that's not <laughs> the case, like eight, I guess. Then I like hear stories of people that are like, yeah, like I was like stayed up until three and then I'm just like, oh, like I just feel bad, even though I'm like, I'm taking care of myself for the long run. But in the short term, I just feel like I'm not working hard enough and I'm like lazy, even though it's not laziness, it's just like taking care of yourself. You should tell them that you're optimizing your body for maximum memory retention. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> I, like, I see what you're saying, but I'm also like, I know myself and at 3 a.m. I'm like not productive at all. I'm like watching TikToks or something. And that is like time I can just like be using to sleep. Even though like maybe like other people are writing essays or whatever and I'm like asleep. Like I think it works out better for me in the long run. Like I feel like a lot of the times when I don't get enough sleep, I end up just like staring at my reading and I like can't comprehend any of it. And I'm like, well, this is useless because I have all this time from like me staying up and like creating more time for myself but like the time I create is like not even well used because I just can't understand what I'm like trying to do. I was just gonna talk about like Google and Facebook and just like big tech companies in Silicon Valley, how they have laundry and the gym and like a bunch of these perks, but then they just like have it there so you can stay longer and you like don't spend time with your family. Or if you're like a single Silicon Valley person, I guess it's like- A tech pro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like your whole life starts to center around your work. It's like this whole new culture. I should something about this, about how work used to be just like part of your life that you do so you can do what you love in other parts of your life. But now the work that you do, there's this new culture of just like that has to be what's like the most fulfilling part like that what's like driving you every single day and you center your life around your work instead of being like oh i just do work even if i don't necessarily enjoy it just so i can enjoy the rest of my life mm -hmm. i mean i definitely think that's like very reflected in like american culture because i feel like if you were to meet someone who's like an adult you'd be like where are you from and what do you do you know and those are basically like the two big questions and also i guess their name but i'll look around i don't know i think about that sometimes too because even though I am not planning on having children anytime soon, if <laughs> if all I did was like raise kids and like work as a secretary or something, I would be so disappointed. I would just feel like I was just like a baby farm, like a Fred in uh, The Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to like discount like people who are stay-at-home moms. Also like I'm young and uh, your mentality changes as you grow older and like the focus of your life like shifts so maybe like now I'm like more career oriented but like in the future having a family will like become my like biological maternal instinct. I think it kind of ties back into the whole, whole lean-in movement or how like people used to be like oh like women can't have it all and then like the whole lean-in movement was like you can but then there's like the whole lean-out movement where people are like no like only a certain amount of people with like a really really good support network like can do it and it's not your fault if you can't balance everything as a woman and also i guess that kind of ties back into like the value of co-working spaces like the wing or well, not that i like know really but i just feel like maybe that's like to have this support network of women where you can talk about issues you're facing as like a female navigating whatever industry you're in they changed the lean in it was like lean in or like lean on to like build your network or something i don't know i feel i read <laughs> like an article about this a while ago my friend didn't retain anything because i don't sleep at home <laughs> oh no also side note at madewell one time like this customer like like couldn't hear me like speaking and she like couldn't hear me i had to like repeat myself a bunch of times and she was like you know you should really lean in and i was like okay <laughs> oh cheryl sanford is that you <laughs> do you want to have spooky if cheryl told me to lean in <laughs> <laughs>